everybody, welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells here at Hanover Fair 2013. My name is Alexa von Busse and I now like to invite you to have a seat, have a drink on the house and uh, ask questions whenever they uh, come up to your head. Uh, raise your hand and I come around with a microphone because I'm the moderator, I have the force. <laughs> So, my uh, first guest is the president and CEO of the Canadian Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association, a national non-profit organization. Please welcome Mr. Eric Denhoff on stage. Thank you. Eric, you may have a seat here, yes. Thank you. Eric, I read something on your website that I liked. Um, you name yourself the collective voice of the Canadian hydrogen and fuel cell sector. Yes. So um, what and who do you raise this voice for? So we have a mixture of members. They are academic members from universities and research agencies. Companies like Hydrogenics and Ballard, Greenlight Energy, Dana, Next Hydrogen, uh, firms like this, small and large in Canada, and then government agencies as well. Do you select them by any specific topics or? No, as long as they're in the hydrogen and fuel cell sector, then they're welcome to join and we represent them all, yeah. Okay, um, what are in your opinion the most uh, important benefits of hydrogen and fuel cell systems? Just give us uh, the Canadian perspective. Yeah, I think it very much depends on where you are geographically and what your situation is with regard to uh, uh, climate and greenhouse gas and this sort of thing. So in in Canada, interestingly, almost all of our product is exported. Mm -hmm. Very little fuel cell or uh, hydrogen is used in Canada. In the oil and gas industry, we use quite a bit of hydrogen, but uh, Ballard exports most of its product, Hydrogenics does, Dana does, and others. Part of the reason is that uh, in Canada, we have a lot of very cheap hydroelectric power and very cheap gas. Mm -hmm. So where the fuel cells are really uh, having an impact is in material handling, uh, in forklifts and things like this in the United States or in uh, renewables like wind to uh, hydrogen and into the gas system like in Germany mm -hmm. or in Japan or Korea or places like that. So. Okay, yeah, we have to keep in mind that Canada is a very large country. <laughs> um, it's not comparable to Germany. So um, could you um, tell in brief what you use where and what, what kind of uh, energy supply is good for what region? Yeah, Canada, his uh, internal energy supply is uh, predominantly hydroelectric. We have huge hydroelectric, very cheap, uh, the equivalent of about, uh, um, well, about six cents Canadian, so uh, a few, a few uh, not, not even one, you know, a quarter of a euro uh, for our power from the historic hydroelectric. And then we have a lot of cheap gas, about... Uh, less than three euros uh, compared to, you know, quite expensive here. Okay. And we have some coal. So in Canada, most of our power on the domestic grid is hydroelectric or gas. Yes. Okay, and where do you um, put these um, different types of uh, energy supplies? Um, like a household uh, in, on landscape? Yeah, yeah, for everything, for industry, for household, uh, and obviously uh, automobiles or gas, but predominantly, yeah. Okay. Um, well, when I imagine, um, I'm, my household gets mm -hmm. uh, the most of its energy um, out of a gas pipeline mm -hmm. and it's, it's located in a city center. Mm -hmm. um, what's the, the typical household in Canada like? Yeah, mostly from hydroelectric and then the next biggest would be natural gas. And this is where uh, we're making some interesting progress because Germany and Canada have some similarities. You have a lot of wind power and you have a lot of excess wind power that you have to pay your neighbors uh, to take. Mm -hmm. And so companies like E.ON uh, have contracted with Canadian companies like Hydrogenics for projects to take uh, surplus wind, create hydrogen, and put this hydrogen into the natural gas pipeline. This has several advantages. One is that it uh, is cheaper than importing the gas from Russia. Mm -hmm. And second, uh, there's some GHG benefits. Now, Canada has surplus wind in Ontario and Alberta as well, and we have some surplus nuclear. So there's the potential to take these and put them into the gas pipeline. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing a growing interest in this and we have good technology. Yeah. Okay, yeah, um, that's my actual question. What do you want to change about this in the future? What are your projects? What are yeah, you working we on? We have tremendous cooperation with Germany. For example, on the automobile side, Germany has invested over $50 million uh, by Mercedes in the world's first automated fuel cell manufacturing plant in Vancouver, in Canada. 
So the fuel cells to make uh, for the cars that Mercedes uh, will launch, Daimler will launch in Germany in 2017, the fuel cells are actually made in Canada, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And Nissan, the Japanese company, is also a partner now in this uh, automated fuel cell plant with robot uh, manufacturing of the fuel cells. At the same time, Ballard Power in Canada has just signed an agreement with Volkswagen to uh, produce uh, the next generation of fuel cell for Volkswagen. So we on the automotive side are doing quite well. Uh, Hydrogenics and Ballard both, both make buses. So you see in Cologne buses that are powered by Canadian fuel cells and, and German buses. You see in Amsterdam coming in London and in Oslo, Ballard fuel cells in those buses. We see with electrolyzers, Hydrogenics selling electrolyzers to Eon. Mm -hmm. um, Dana sells product and Greenlight Energy here. So we have a long-standing relationship with Germany mm -hmm. and increasingly with other places in Europe as well. So, okay. Yeah. Do you think this automobile technology is the one that sells first or why do you think that's... You know, the automotive one is really interesting because uh, the, the most successful car Toyota ever made in history was the Prius. Mm -hmm. The chief designer of the Prius is now the chairman of Toyota. So he has said publicly uh, that Toyota is making their bet on hydrogen fuel cell cars. Mm -hmm. They will launch in 2015. Hyundai's owner, uh, chairman, launched the first thousand they're producing this year of Hyundai fuel cell cars. And Mercedes, Nissan, Ford will come out in 2017. O others are, uh, are working on it. So it will be a slow, consistent development, but it will for sure it will exceed battery electric within uh, five or six or seven years. Uh, and then we'll see if it's competitive with everything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions from the audience until now? I think not at the moment. Um, so, yeah, you talked about a lot of corporations worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see yourself um, compared to other countries um, in terms of moving, I'd like to call it, moving into a new energy era? Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think Canada has had a long history of leadership on hydrogen and fuel cell technology, and we are facing tremendous competition from Germany, Korea, Japan, uh, some from the United States, and eventually we will face all of us competition from China. So the question is, where can Canada maintain its leadership role? Clearly on the automotive side, we still have very strong leadership, or Germany and Japan and other countries wouldn't be coming to Canada to make their fuel cells. Yeah. We have very strong leadership on the electrolyzer side, although all kinds of companies from Siemens to McPhee and others are, are, uh, are pushing hard there. And we have uh, very, very good uh, leadership on backup power and stationary power. You know, China Telecom buys our backup power for telecom. Uh, so does Indonesia and all kinds of other countries, India. So I think we're doing quite well there. But, uh, Germany is a very friendly and aggressive competitor and uh, obviously is investing, a, <laughs> Germany is investing a lot more money in things like fueling stations than Canada. Mm -hmm. And Germany is investing very heavily in renewable energy to hydrogen to gas. Uh, so this is good because we're partners often in some of these projects or contractors to them. Yeah. And it's bad because sometimes they're beating us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it's a competitive world, it's okay. And another question Win that came to my some. mind, um, how is government um, supporting you and supporting Yeah, our governments have been pretty good. You know, the Canadian government has uh, supported uh, the development of research and technology, both at the university level and, uh, and the research and commercialization level. They've supported contributions to, we have the world's largest zero emission bus program, public transit mm -hmm. program. Yeah. They've supported that, uh, fueling stations. So it's tougher, like it is everywhere yeah. with uh, budgets. But still, the government of Canada has been very supportive, and governments like the government of British Columbia and government of Ontario have helped as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you think they're really believing in this uh, new energy era? Like yeah, they I think so. You know, Germany? yeah, they th they obviously have lots of competition from other technologies, and so they're careful. Mm -hmm. But we still have lots of support. Yeah, it's good support. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank you. Um, I think we already came to the end of our interview. Um, yeah. Um, they, oh. We have a question <laughs> coming up right okay. now. It's, I'll be with you. Theo Holtum, Green Hydrogen Consulting. I'd like to ask, um, what is the capacity of your automated factory in Vancouver, I think you said? And um, also, um, do you have any uh, indication of what kind of uh, lowering of costs per kilowatt in the fuel cell uh, such manufacturing will provide? 
Yeah, the, the, uh, the volume, uh, he's asking what the, uh, the number of fuel cells that the uh, Daimler plant in Vancouver is making, and this is secret, we can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there are a variety of sort of obvious reasons why it's secret. The, uh, the plant is quite amazing. We are hosting, uh, Canada is hosting our sixth international hydrogen fuel cell conference in June. 16th to 19th in Vancouver. As a part of that, you can come tour the, uh, the Daimler facility, and they will tell you what they will tell you, but I don't think they will tell you that. Uh, on, in terms of the cost per kilowatt hour, that's an interesting question. I'd have to go look at it. I know the, the cost of fuel cells has come down in, in Canada more than 50% in the last eight years, and the durability has gone up uh, several times, a factor of two or three. So if, if you look at a bus, for example, they used to be uh, you know, X number of hours, uh, and they've, they've tripled the number of hours that the fuel cell uh, will, will last for, for, say, for a bus. And the price has come down quite significantly. Uh, but it really it depends on which company's product you're talking about and the application, yeah. Within what time range they tripled? Over the last uh, eight years, roughly, six or eight years, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question coming to Jorin? Okay, then. Yep. Thank you very Thank much, you. Eric. Thank you. Thank you to be here.